Hey there, and welcome to the seventh section of the Framer Playground course. In this section, we're gonna learn how to create a beautiful transition from this play button into a screen that's going to sit on top of this one that's going to play a video. We're also going to use gestures to be able to open and dismiss that modal UI. Now the thing is, we're going to recreate this frame from scratch in code. But the part that we're not going to recreate is this icon. So that's why I created a design component for this and a design component for this. We're not gonna recreate any of this UI and we're not gonna recreate this play icon, but we will be recreating this blue with a drop shadow thing so that it can animate into a modal. First of all, let's create a new code component called course screen. And here, I'm gonna delete the code. Let's import React, so import star as React from React. Then we're gonna import the frame from Framer. And finally, we're gonna import from quote dot forward slash canvas so that we can import the design components. Inside the curly braces, we're gonna import the course. So let's create our component, export function course screen, parentheses curly braces, return, and then set the frame and close the frame and in between the frame we're gonna set the course if you save this it's going to auto format for you and while we're here we're gonna set the default props right away so course screen dot default props is equal to curly braces set the width to an iPhone screen so 375 height 812 and using these values, we're gonna put those as props right away. So for the frame, we're gonna have a width of props.width, height, props.height. So let's preview this and we have this screen. I'm gonna resize this window. Put this one on the right. And let's get rid of this background background is equal to nothing. Okay, so that's a very basic setup. And now we're gonna create that play button right here that's blue. First of all, I'm gonna import the play icon. So next to course, I'm gonna add play icon. And then I'm gonna create the frame for the blue button. Frame, close frame. And inside that, I'm gonna put my play icon. So if you save this, it's going to format. Now we just need to style this thing properly. So I'm gonna start with the frame. We're gonna set the width to 66, height to 66 as well. And then I'm going to center the icon inside. So I can just put center and then voila. Let's do the border radius, border radius. We're gonna set it to 24 and set the background color. Background is equal to curly braces, double quotes, and I'm gonna go and get the color code right here. And uh, it's this one. There you go, we have this beautiful play button right here and we just need to add a bit of drop shadow I'm gonna save first so that I have more space to add more properties such as the drop shadow for example so shadow is equal to and if you've done a bit of CSS you can use exactly the same parameters as the box shadow property in CSS so 0 20 pixel 20 pixel and then RGBA and then the value for RGBA. Now, for those who don't know, this is the X position, the Y position, so we're going down uh, by 20 pixels, and then this is the spread. 
So now we're gonna set the color and you can get the RGBA value from the design tool. So I'm gonna click this and here in this tool in Framer, you can switch between the hex value and the RGB value. So you can basically copy and paste the code right here and apply that in code. So I'm gonna copy that and go back and replace the RGB value right here. And it's gonna give you that drop shadow. Awesome. Now all that's left is to position this to here. So I'm gonna set the top position to 208 and the right position to 83. So now I have my button right here. So what we're gonna do now is to animate this using use cycle. And if you remember, use cycle is the toggling of animation. So when I tap here, it's going to toggle to a full screen mode. And when I tap again, it's gonna come back to the play button. So let's import use cycle from Framer. So use cycle. And then here, right before return, I'm gonna put const. And here we're gonna set an array using square brackets. The first value is going to be our animation. And the second value is the function to animate, to cycle that. And then I'm going to say equal to use cycle. And now we're gonna have our properties for the use cycle. I'm gonna set uh, parentheses curly braces. In the first curly braces, I'm going to set the initial animation values. So I can press enter because I'm gonna have multiple lines of these properties. So you can set width. So basically all the same values that you see here, we're going to rewrite that in JavaScript properties. So width 66, height 66, border radius 24, the background with that color code, I'm gonna copy and paste. And then the shadow set to this code right here. Make sure to have a comma separating every property. And then the top position, 208, right position, 83. So everything inside the first set of curly braces these are initial animation values. And so we're gonna create another set right after the curly braces. I'm gonna set another one. And this time, this is where it, your play button is gonna go in terms of width, height, and so on. So the width is going to be 100%. When you use 100%, you're gonna have to use uh, quotes and then the height, it's going to be 250, top zero, right zero, background to let's say black, the shadow, I'm going to use the same values, copy and paste from here, except that I'm gonna change a few things. I'm going to set, instead of a blue drop shadow, I'm gonna set it to black. And the thing about RGB is that you just need to remember two colors. The first one is white, the second one is black. The rest, you can just use your design tool to pick those color uh, values, which I did uh, for this one. But in this case, I wanted black, so I'm gonna set to zero, zero, zero. And then the opacity, I'm gonna set to 0 0.25. And then finally, we're gonna set the border radius to zero. All right, um, we have our animation values. You can save this to have a better formatting and your code should look like this. The only missing part really is to be able to get an event and apply the animations to where we want it. So where we want it is on the frame right here. So we're gonna put animate is equal to animation. And then we're also going to apply the event 
In this case, we're going to use untap on the play button is equal to curly braces set to animate. Now we've done a lot of stuff, it's time to test the animation. So I'm going to click here so you can see it goes to the modal and then I click again, it comes back. Now you're probably asking me, well, man, why did we have to go through the trouble of setting these properties when they are repeated here? Well, that's a good question. And in fact, if I decide to delete this, it's just going to work the same. The thing is, when you set up these values right here, it just means that you can design at the same time and you are seeing the result right away. In programming, just like in design, there are so many ways to achieve the same result. And the most important thing is to understand what can you do and in what context and how does it affect the rest of your code. And that's why at any point in this course, I highly encourage you to just customize your code and try to break it as soon as possible so that you can find solutions and alternatives to the problems that you're trying to solve. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how to make this response to gestures like the drag, but also how to use use transform to make it respond on the drag values. All right, so we're going to enable drag. So on this frame right here, I'm gonna set drag is equal to, and I'm gonna set the Y position. So you can see I can start dragging it, but we need to set the constraints as well. So drag constraints, set to curly braces. I'm gonna save first because it's gonna be really hard to code if the line is too long. Inside the curly braces, since we're only using uh, the Y position, I'm gonna set another set of curly braces and set top zero, bottom zero. All right, so now I cannot drag anymore and it's always going to come back. So what I like to do here is to be able to see the position while I drag. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use motion value. So I'm going to import use motion value. So comma use motion value. And then right before the use cycle line, we're going to put const y is equal to use motion value and set it to default zero. Now you might be asking, well, why do we need to use motion value? Well, that's because when we do animation values, they have so many things packed into it that it's not as simple as a, a number. It has to be transformed into a motion value to be able to get that back when we're gonna read it. So now we're gonna attach the Y value to the frame Y value. So Y is equal to curly braces Y. And when we do this, Every time that we drag this, it's going to listen to that motion value. And then we can use an event like undrag is equal to curly braces. And here inside, you know, the curly braces, since we're using an event, we can actually write a function directly inside. And to do that, we need to write function parentheses curly braces. And so you should have something like this. Inside that function, now we can use console log and then listen to the Y motion value. But in order to get specifically uh, what you want, you have to do dot get and then parentheses. Otherwise, you're going to get a bunch of crazy values. Now, let's test this out and I'm going to open the console. So what is the console? Basically, this is a place where you can have messages um, that is printed, but just for developers, for you to see. This is not for your users. And this is useful for debugging and seeing what kind of stuff that you can get from the UI. So in this case, we're listening to the Y value. And every time that the drag is happening, we're listening to the Y value and then we're going to print that into the console. So check it out. Boom. So you can see 
every time I drag, it's always listening. And the more that I drag, I get my Y positioning for that. And now this is going to be minus. This is going to be positive. Okay, so we need to do something with these values. I think it would be interesting to transform these values into a way where I can apply, let's say, the scale to this button. So let's learn how to do that. I'm gonna go back here at the top, add a comma, and then use transform from Framer. Then I'm gonna go to right after the use motion value line, cons scale is equal to use transform. And so what I wanna do here is to use the Y position and turn that into a scale. So the first value for use transform is the value that I want to use, so the Y position. And then the second value, it's going to be an array between the uh, minimum and the maximum. And in this case, uh, let's say you, you drag here, you can see that we can reach maybe a maximum of minus uh, 150 and, minus, and, and then uh, positive 150. So I'm going to set that minus 150, comma, and then 150. So that's the range of values for my Y position. And then for the third value, I want to transform uh, this range of values into a range of scale values. So again, square brackets, and then I'm going to set 1.5 in terms of scale as a maximum to 0.5 in terms of scale as a minimum. Then finally, I'm going to apply the scale to scale. So now you're going to see when I drag up, boom, it becomes bigger. Wow. And then when I drag down, it becomes really small. So that gives you a really nice effect. In fact, you can do a, a lot of other things like, you know, you can do the transform on the rotation. You can do that for maybe the color. At this point, there's just no limit. And on top of that, we're using gestures to uh, trigger these events. And I think that's awesome. Now, I want to say that if you don't understand everything, um, don't worry about it. I don't even understand all of this stuff. In fact, I'm just so afraid that I say something wrong and that, you know, I'm explaining you the wrong way about these things. It, it's entirely possible. What I can say is that the results don't lie. You can see that it works and you have a prototype, right? That's the most important thing. If you can show it to someone and they're excited about what you're building, then it's all worth it. Okay, so before we go, the last thing I want to do is maybe, you know, change the transition right here. I'm going to go back to the frame surrounding the play icon. I'm going to add transition is equal to curly braces and curly braces again and set ease to ease out. And then voila, we have a, a smoother animation. Well, I hope you enjoyed this part of the course and we learned really great things today. We learned how to create an animated transition. We also learned how to use gestures and listen to the motion value, how to use the console log, but also how to use that Y position and transform that into a scale position that has a range. I think that was really exciting. Now in the next session, I wanna show you how to play a video within this screen right here. I also wanna show you how to do a dismiss gesture. So when I start dragging down at some point, when I drag at this point, let's say here, then it's going to dismiss our screen. I hope you'll stick around because we have a lot of exciting content coming. Thank you so much. See you then.